everybody welcome to the studio I'm here to paint a demonstration for you in pastel and I don't know about you but I don't like to take time to plan my paintings I know it's good for me I teach it all the time we need to plan before we paint but there's sometimes I just want to get up there and paint um, so what I have what I usually do is I get up there I paint a quick response study. That is something that I just paint without planning and just respond to my subject, ask myself what is my story, and then I paint using that quick response study as a guide, as inspiration. So I want to show you today how I do that and use a quick response study to paint a more involved painting. So let's have a look at what's going on here today on the easel. Um, want to talk first about my supplies that I'm going to be using. I'll be working with Terry Ludwig Pastels. This is the floral landscape set. It is a set that I curated for Terry Ludwig Pastels. I'm also probably going to use some new pastels. That is the brand NU Pastels. Hard. This is a harder pastel. And I will be using some workable fixative. This is Blair Very Low Odor Workable Fixative. Um, the paper I'm working on is UART paper, but I have toned it to this kind of nice warm base using very thin acrylic paint. UART paper is a typically a pale, creamy color, so I wanted to have a uh, kind of warmer middle value base to work on. This is our reference photo so it's just an interior forest scene and when I don't want to take time to make a plan at the very least I ask myself what is my story why am I drawn to this this photo or this scene and what do I want to express and my story for this is light in the forest so I just love how the light is kind of kind of coming from the forest drawing me in I want to go in and discover what's there so I did a quick response study this is a, just a quick five by seven where I just laid in the big basic shapes and the colors that I wanted to use it took me about 15 minutes and I'm going to use both the reference photo and the study to um, inspire my painting so the first thing I'm going to do I take a pastel pencil and very uh, quickly draw in the big simple shapes so we have the horizon line which is I really don't want it to be in the middle which I just made it in the middle so I'm going to raise it up just a hair it doesn't show all that much but needs to be there I know that I want the light in the forest to be slightly off center so right in this area so we're going to start the trees right in here. I like that there's one kind of leaning tree kind of drawing us into the painting and I like how some of them go a little bit lower in the ground that way they're not all the same uh, shape size and they don't end up on the same plane. There's also trees in the distance here and then over on this side there's another couple of larger trees and one thing is I'm really responding to the photo I'm not trying to copy the photo so I it would drive me nuts if I had to look at this photo and put the trees exactly where they are in the photo I just want to kind of place them in an interesting arrangement so here's where the light is coming in Oops. right like that drawing us into the scene and all this area is in shadow so that's the extent of you want to move it over a little bit how's that that's the extent of my quick drawing so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to block in all of the dark shapes and I'm going to start the block in by using some hard pastels this will allow me to have more layers because the harder pastels have less pigment or less um, more less pigment so more binder so they don't fill the tooth of your paper as quickly as the softer pastels. So I'm blocking in those dark tree trunks and the dark foliage masses. I have to darken whoa, the shadows. And there's a little bit of shadow in between where the light strips are, so I'll block that in. And I'm using a dark blue. So 
So those are all the dark areas. Now I want to block in the light areas or the sunlit areas and I'm going to use a bright yellow green to represent the sunlit grasses. And there's a little bit coming in over here, sneaking in behind those trees. And in the sky area, I'm going to use a pale blue. Now remember, this is the first layer. This is the blocking. This is just to give me a base to respond to. And let's use a... This is another dark blue, but this is a cool blue. Or it's actually a warm blue. It's a turquoise. And I'm going to put it in the shadowed areas. Just so I can have an interesting color. And I think I'm going to add a pale yellow to the lower portions in the forest to represent the sunlight. And before I go any further, I've kind of lost my tree trunks. So I'm going to just re-establish those tree trunks with the dark blue. Now I want to make sure the trunks have a variety of sizes and spacing. We don't want them to be too evenly spaced or evenly sized. That would be boring. All right. So that's the first layer. What I'm going to do with the first layer is take a piece of pipe insulation foam and I'm going to rub in this first layer. I want to create a soft, out of focus underpainting so that I have big simple shapes to respond to. So I like to start the painting by having big simple shapes and then I will gradually increase my level of clarity and detail. So there we go with the block in. Now I'm going to change direction and use the softer pastels and I'm going to reinforce the dark areas. So let's anywhere where I put dark I'm going to use a soft pastel this is a dark blue, so I'm reinforcing the tree trunks with dark blue. I used dark blue already in the underpainting, but this is just adding a layer of the softer pastel. I want to darken this foreground. That will really help us get that feeling of light. Darken the base of the tree trunks. So that's one layer of dark, but I like to add multiple layers of dark. Uh, so over on the sunlit side, where the, the light might be hitting the tree trunks, I'm going to introduce a red, burgundy, dark burgundy, to the tree trunk. So it's the same value as the blue. But it adds a touch of warmth to those tree trunks. So the ones over here that are catching the sunlight, I'm going to use this red-violet, or burgundy. The tree trunks that are in the shade will be treated differently. Um, for those, I'm going to use kind of a blue-gray because they're in the shadows. These are getting some light. So I'll adjust those in just a minute. Um, I need to continue with this red-violet in the other dark areas near the sunlight, the warmer color, and then I'm going to take a dark blue-green for the shadow areas. The part that are, that are away from the sunlight, because remember I want to enhance that feeling of the sunlight glow. All right, now I'm going to block in some of the foliage. So I'm taking a dark value green and blocking in the mass of the foliage. 
and I'm letting I'm using a very light touch because I want the layers that I already put down so the, all the, the blues of the underpainting and even maybe the um, tone of the paper I, I want that to peek through just to give us some variety and interest in the color I'm going to add some of that green in the grassy area in the shadow part and I'm going to add another layer of green this is a really uh, warm almost brown dark green and a light touch so that we can see the layers that are underneath all right now I am to the part of the painting where I'm going to use the workable fixative. So I'm going to use this, I use Blair Very Low Odor workable fixative and I'm going to give everything a quick spray. And the reason why I do this is I want to get these darks ni nice and rich and fix them in place. Um, if I use the fixative, then I know that when I go over it with other colors, this will stay nice and dark. And it also gives me a, a very slight feeling of texture. There's just something about the um, fixative that gives this textured feeling. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to carve into the tree shapes by painting the sky. And remember, we want kind of a sunlit glow. So I'm going to actually use a pale, or this, I'm going to start with a middle value yellow, a golden yellow, and I'm going to use it to start to break up the um, foliage and the tree shape so that I can get the feeling of the light kind of filtering through. So I'm creating sky holes based upon where I've placed foliage. But that's not as that's a little bit darker than I actually want it, but I want to start dark and then I'll use a paler yellow on top of it to get the right value that I need for that lower portion of the sky. As we go further up into the sky, there's a there's a feeling of of blue, it's a blue sky. Although in the photo, if you were to look at the reference photo, um, it looks white. In fact, the sunlight on the grass looks white, and that's because the photo's been overexposed. It's not accurate, and so if I were to paint what I saw in the photo and painted all of this almost white, it's not going to have a feeling of, a, of sunlight, um, warm glow of sunlight. So... I'm making the sky a little bit bluer than it looks in the photo and giving a more of a yellow warm glow. Now I'm making sky holes, but they, you know, we don't want them to look like ornaments. So I'm going to put a few in and then what I need to do is take the green that I used and add more foliage on top. So with sky holes, I'll put some in and then I take some out. Put some in, and then I cover some up. Okay, so add another layer of green just to get that foliage. Pull out some branches. Use the side of my pastel to pull out some of the branches. Now I'm going to add the sunlight in the grasses. So I'm going to start by using a warmer yellowy green right on the edges of where the sunlight is filtering in. Just right at the edges. And again, I don't want the, the shapes, the stri I don't want it to look too stripy. That's a word. I want it to feel natural. 
Uh, cast shadows. When shadows are cast upon a surface, it's usually a darker version of that color with a little bit of influence of the sky color. So I'm going to add, if the sky is blue, I'm going to add a little bit of the blue-green in the shadow areas because it would be, um, have a little blue cast from the sky. Now I'm using a yellow green that is a little bit more intense. Remember where it was sneaking through back behind these trees? So I'm going to stick a little bit of this yellow green, have it trailing off into the distance. And I'm going to press harder as I come closer to us to really emphasize the light. And then up near the main tree area, I use a yellow green that's even more intense. And I press harder to really kind of have the eye drawn back into this area. So we are at the stage of the painting where I have all the important things in play. I've got the shapes, the light. It's now up to me to start adding those final details. So I'm going to add another layer of workable fixative. Let that dry for just a second, and I'm going to start to add more of the detail. So I really need to refine the tree trunks a little bit more, especially near the focal area. So like these trees right over here near the light, to me those are the stars. Those That's the most important area. So there needs to be a little more clarity in these tree trunks. So harder edges, a little bit uh, more emphasis on the the light over in this area as well. But the tree trunks that are off to the uh, the outer edges, they don't need to have quite as much detail. I'm going to add a little bit more of that red on these tree trunks that are getting some of the light just on the edges and over here as well. But the tree trunks that are off, let's see, in the shadows, I'm using, I don't, I, I wanted to use this bright blue, so I'm using a hard pastel because I don't have it in the softer ones. So I really want to add a cool blue over here into the shadowed areas, maybe even off to this area. And there's some hints of, of these blue flowers over in the shadows some sort of wildflower growing in the, sh in, the, in the grass, in the shadow areas. So I'm using this bright blue, massing some in and then painting some with harder edges. Hopefully the eye will look at the little uh, flower marks that I'm making and would be able to say, oh, okay, all of this blue stuff is flowers. The other thing that I'm going to do is add a little bit more clarity in the sunlight areas. So add some kind of upright marks to look like the grasses. So I'm using a harder pastel so I can get some harder edge marks to represent some of the little grass pieces so that we can see Oops. A little bit more clarity in that area. And then in the shadow area, I'm going to use a darker green. It's not dark enough. See if I have a darker green. You're probably saying, why do you not have your, your uh, hard pastels as organized as your soft ones? Well, sometimes it's fun to just have a jumble and have the mindset of, okay, I'm just going to make this work. It's a lot of fun to kind of see what you can do with a jumble of pastels. Is it the most efficient way to work? Not always, but sometimes it's just fun. So I'm using a hard uh, new pastel, dark blue. And just to put some of those finishing marks, I feel like I could have added a few more hints of trees in the distance. 
so I'm just using the side of the pastel. A few more um, branches, and so since I have a few more branches, I need to add a little bit more foliage on those branches. And just a few hints of leaves in this area here, just to give a little bit more interest. think I am at the point in every painting you get to a point in every painting where you're not exactly sure how many marks you need to make to finish the painting and this is usually the time where I like to stop so I'm going to stop and I'm going to evaluate and I'll come right back and add those finishing marks. All right I stepped away which is always a good thing um, <clears throat> and what I decided is I looked at my study, my quick response, remember that was my initial response, and I saw some things that I did in the study that I didn't do in this painting that I think it needs. Um, and so one is I'm starting to feel like these trees are too lined up, I mean too much the same shape and size. So I want to go in and um, just add another one here and there just to break up the, the evenness of everything. Bring one down a little bit lower. Um, and I can also, I feel like we're going down a, a, a hill and I, and I know the light is bringing us in but it's not because it's a hill and that's because these marks are going down at an angle. So what I need to do is kind of pull it up slightly so that just even making that one mark makes it feel like it's a level area rather than going downhill. I really didn't want it to feel like we were going downhill. So the other thing that I liked about the study that I didn't have was a, a little bit more of a cooler green in the grasses over here. It just was almost too dark. So I'm going to take a, a cooler grass green and make a few marks over here and then again over in this area in the shadows keeping it keeping it flat um, the other thing that I noticed is I liked in the study that I had a few more uh, branches kind of pulling us into the painting so I want to enhance that a little bit more just so put a few more of the darker blue branches kind of pulling the eye in and then we could probably have just a couple more hints of branches over here to break up some of these sky holes. The other thing is I like the blue over here but it's too isolated so what I really need to do is add some hints of the blue flowers over in the shadows over here. So I'm going to use a duller blue because it's further back. Just put a couple of hints of blue over here just to tie the two areas together. And I noticed that I put some of these kind of red violet marks that were in the trees, but I added some in here. I don't know why I did that when I was doing my quick response, because you know you're not analyzing what you're doing, but I did it and I actually like it so, and it, again it helps tie these two areas together. So I'm going to just add a few marks of the red violet over on that side. I also really need to enhance the way the sunlit grasses are kind of um, peeking up on top of the shadows. So I'm going to snap this hard pastel so I can get a finer line and paint some of these grasses just to show that these bits of grasses are kind of popping up into the sh into the uh, shadowed areas. And that adds a little bit more detail in the foreground because you'd start to lose detail as you go into the distance. And then the final thing is this tree trunk here, this main guy, doesn't feel grounded into the ground. So I'm going to add a dark, um, the Terry Ludwig eggplant just to help ground the trees a little bit more. And then one other thing I noticed that there's a dark kind of blob right there. Um, don't know what that is but I'm going to just use a pale yellow and break that up just a hair. And 
I think I can break up and add a little bit more light filtering down into this area. So I'll use a pale blue new pastel just to create a few more sky holes. And I think I'm going to call this one finished. It was a lot of fun to use the study. Uh, I could probably spend more time on it, but I really want it to be more of about the story of the light in the forest um, and not painting every leaf on the tree. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you like the idea of doing quick response studies, if you want to work faster, over on my Patreon page this month, with this is August 2020, we've been studying or we've been doing quick response studies all month long. So check it out. Join us if you want to uh, get more involved in pastel. I appreciate you watching these videos and look for another one real soon and let's paint.